Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin Edeyim Allahu Ekber Allahu Ekber Allahu Ekber Allahu Ekber Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Sustainer, caretaker, 
Rabbana atina fi dunya hasnatan wa fi akhirati hasnatan wa qina adhab an-nar. O our Lord, O our sustainer, O our evolver, O our nourisher, give us the excellence in the dunya, in this life, so we will have the best school, the best masjid, the best family, the best marriage, the best business, the best health, the best of everything in this life. But the consistency of Islam in the dua, and in the future, the life beyond this life, the next day, next day, life beyond this life, give us the same hasan. The word doesn't change to qayr or ta'i. It's consistent. Rabbana antina fi dunya hasana wa fi akirati hasan. Give us the excellence, the best in this life. That's balance of Islam. And give us that same beauty, that same hasan in the akir. The next day, next day in the big akir, like beyond this life. Wakiya and protect us from the torment of the hellfire. Give us that sense of consciousness, that taqwa. Wakiya, that's taqwa. That consciousness as we pursue this life with the right mindset and the right spirit. We want the dunya, but we want to go after it, not as an oppressor, not as a liar, not as, not, not as a slave monger, etc. Imperialist and dominance that we see right now. Ukraine and Russia, we see that, but a whole history of that. From a till game. So Allah said, yes, go after it. I've given it to you, because even after Juma and Ayat 10, I believe, of Surah 62, Allah says, disperse, seeking the bounties of Allah when it's over. He said, but think on Allah a lot. So you'll be successful in this life. But you want the right mindset, not at any cost. Well, I feel accurate, husband, and you want the best in the accurate, but you still want that consciousness, that loving feel of Allah and righteousness, so you don't pursue the future and neglect your responsibility in this life. Thanks, right? So we pray Allah the Most High will accept our Juma today, the Qutbah and the Salah, and cleanse our hearts and our minds that our intentions will be good and clean and honorable. Allah says to us, we go to Quran, inshallah, thinking on the beauty of what Allah gives us in Quran concerning our life and what he makes whole to us, etc. From Surah 10, which is Jonah, Yunus. Now I know I'm gonna slip a few times and say Noah because it both deals with water. So when you hear me slip, really I'm saying Jonah, but then my mind is slipping, right? Because we know Noah, it rained 40 days and 40 nights. He built the ship, right? The ark. And they said, oh, it never rains here. He's a madman. Oh, I said, build an ark. And then it rained 40 days and 40 nights. And one of his sons went to the mountain. He didn't come into the ark, and he was overwhelmed. And after Noah, you see, I'm all I know, I'll go get on my jump. After Noah, after that, after the rain settled, after 40 days and 40 nights, a new dispensation, a new world began. And from him, he had the sons, right? Ham, Shem, and Jephthah. And they say the world populated from that. But it was water. It was water that brought about that change. 
but also a whole new life, even though it destroyed the old world. And so Allah says in Quran, as we have to go this way, do you not consider the water that you drink? Allah said, I could send it down salty, unfit to drink. So be grateful for what you take for granted. And you see, I've got pages here, but this is coming off the top now, right? We plan and Allah plan, Allah is the best to plan. Your intentions are good. So, the water. We know how important it is, not just for drinking, we know for life. Allah says in Quran, and science backs it up, that's why any planet they go to, they look to see if it's water. That all life comes from water, right? And we know just when we're in our mother's belly, before the baby is born, they say, honey, my water broke. Water first. That's a sign. We're in that water bed and don't drown by the mercy of Allah. We're in the water, right? We know that. And our bodies is made up of 60 or more percent water. As Muslims and believers, that's life. As Muslims and believers, we head here then and say, Haya Salah. Come alive to Salah. Even though we say come, the word Haya, Hayun, is life. Allah is called El Hayu in Surah 2, Baqarah, Ayah 255, the Ayah Surah Kursi. Allah says, Allahu la ilaha illa hu al Hayu Qayyum. Allah, there's no God but Him. He's Al Hayu, the living. Al Hayu Al Qayyum. Beautiful signs of Baha. The living Qayyum is Kiyam. That's the stand up position we start the life. Yamel Kiyam. So Allah says He's the living and He's the self supporting, self standing. So Hayu is life. But you see, the beauty of it is life stands. There's a story of Solomon that he was standing, his staff was holding him up, but he was dead. They thought he was still alive because he was standing. And say the termites ate up the staff, and then he fell, and he realized he was dead. And life is standing, right? So Allah says, I'm self-supporting, but it's connected with life. I, you need your legs to support you, etc. Allah says, how you out there you? Self-independent, right? We start the Salat, Kiyan. And the so your association with life, Allah said when we raise from the dead, what is it called? Yelmel Kiyaman. The day of standing. But anyway, Hayat. Allah is the living. So we establish that. You go read behind. Hayat. So in the Mu'edin or yourself, if you're home, you call a man or you come and you say, Hayat Salat. Hayat Salat. It's really saying, come alive to Salat, and that Salat is the, is the source of our life as Muslims and believers. Praying to Allah, proper worship, right? Hayat. And when you have, when you come alive to Salat, proper worship, and we know it's life, because our Salat is different than other people's prayer, do I? We start up, it's movement. Up, down, up, down. That's a sign of life. When you dead, no movement, right? So that's a sign of life. He's still moving, man. Hurry up, get him to the house. He's still alive. So it's a call to life. So say, hey, salam. Come alive to salam. And if you come alive to worshiping Allah properly, hey, salam. You will then have a successful life, right? Come to success. Come to cultivation. It's associated, for that, associated with farming and cultivation. Meaning if you till the soil, that's prayer, worship. You till the soil, you water it, and shall lie, you have a successful crop. So for that, it's also associated with farming. But something you got to work at. So you want to be successful, you work at proper worship to Allah. But to show us the connection with the water, before the salat, we got to go to the water. We gotta perform wudu, right? And Allah say all life comes from water. So if you go to the water, then you say, oh, yes, sir. I'm born out of the water, right? Moral cleansiness, etc., right? 
line. So water. Now, show you the beauty of water. Not just for drinking, but for eating. Do you know, as we do, if we eat a cow, lamb, sheep, or anything on the land, we have to take it through a halal process. Right? You praise the Lord. Right? So, it has to be halal. Made permissible, etc. Right? But you go to the water, it's already halal. You don't have to go through the process for fish. You go eat some fish, take it out, catch it, eat it right away. I mean, you're going to say thank you to a lot of service, but it's automatically halal from the water. You understand? We eat fish, you don't have to take it through no process. You get a big well, whatever, right? No halal process. It's already halal from the water. So a lot of people, do you not consider the water that you drink? Take this little walk. So water, right? It's automatically halal. Fish. Now, groupings of fish are called what? School. Fish is considered brain food. We used to sell that white in H and G. Head it and gut it. Buy it, because it's good brain food. Fish, right? Salmon, man, wild caught, right? Fish. Omega-3, it's all kind of goodness for fish, right? But a lot of put it out a long time ago. Just go straight to the water and get the fish. Good for you, right? So for us, you can go straight to the water, get the fish. Omega-3, all kind of benefit of fish. Fish are smart. They got to be tricked into being caught. You throw a hook out there, he ain't bothering it, right? You got to put some bait on it and make it look attractive in some good form, right? That's how you catch fish other than with the net. Put a worm, some kind of bait. You got to bait them. When you go fishing, right? You flip brothers in fish, Tom, right? You got to trick that smart fish. But it's also associated with school. That shaitan and his imp got to make it attractive to you to get your mind and your brain and take you off course, right? It's a trick. Fish. So anyway, you got to bait the fish. You got to make something look like something that is not. That things sometimes, a lot of times, appear to be something that is not. That's why Allah say reflect. Think. Things appear this way, but it's really that way. Allah says in Quran, they boast that they killed Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, right? That's what they say. Oh, we killed Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, etc., right? God's prophet and message. But what do Allah say? He say, they neither kill him nor crucify him, right? But what else does it say, brother? But it was made to look that way to them. They were faked out. That's Quran, straight from Quran. Oh, we got them. Oh, we stopped that thing. We stopped the word of Allah. We stopped the prophet. We shut it down. <laughs> so I might think they shut you down, brother. Sister. Shaitan and his end. But the old books say, truth crushed to the ground must rise again. And Allah says, Jael ha! Truth has come and falsehood must vanish. It was given its run. Things come out of life. But Allah said, no, they neither killed him nor crucified him. It was just made to look that way unto them. So you never know what's happening in your life, brother. A situation could be coming this way, that way. Your enemy, somebody trying to hurt you, this, that, and the other. And Allah throws something in the way. Oh, we ain't got to deal with him no more, man. He finished, he strung out. And when it passed by, 
bring up again. I thought you said, man, that joker was done. He don't have to see now. So it appear, a lot can make something appear a certain way. But in time, the truth will come out. And a lot said, Jair El Hawk, truth has come. So anyway, back on that fish, water. So you have to check them, right? Bait. And we used to go fishing. We didn't call it dog then we go fishing, right? Try to bring somebody to the den. It's cool. But anyway, now, on the fish, good for you. Smart, associated with thinking, brain, etc. Now, when you go to the Quran, so a 10, right? It's called Jonah. And Jonah is known to what? Have got consumed in a fish. Hoot. Hoot. It refers to fish. It's word for fish. It might allude to a whale, a big fish, but in Quran it's kind of general as well. Okay? Although I think um, semakat, semakat might be fish general. Right? But hoot. The hard H, the wad, and the calf in the Arabic. Hoot. So, stand this is water. And we know we have the sea world. Okay, now, Allah says, here, now, we go to Jonah. And Jonah comes after Galba, non repentance. And the story of Jonah is, he was on a mission. Allah told him, go teach the destruction of Nineveh. Because they were doing evil and wrong, and they're going to be destroyed, right? But then they changed. And they repented and they changed. And he was still wanted to teach that. And it's an embarrassment. Oh man, I thought you said they were gonna be destroyed. I thought you said there was a bunch of devils, this, that, and the other. You mean now they're all right and righteous, man? If I couldn't believe you then, how can I believe you next time? So he had a mission and it's reported he ran from his mission, right? And he got on a boat with thieves and cutthroat. He didn't belong there. And the boat started water rocking, right? And they're on the top, and they said, man, that's that guy in the hub, man. He ain't one of us, man. He the one all this is happening. And they threw him over into the water, right? And he got swallowed up by a big fish. Now, here, staying in Quran now, just till uh, we get to where we want to go. In Surah 10, John, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Just to do the first start and then we'll go there. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Elif Lam Ra. Tilka Ayatul Kitab al Hakim. In the Surah Jonah, it starts out. These are the verses of the wise book, Quran. The verses of the wise book. When you go into this surah, this, ayat, this surah, expect to get wisdom, because these are the ayats of the wise book. Now, stand here with Jonah. That's how we came in by the water. Allah says this. Allah says, First, as a reminder to us, then I'll go to what it says of Jonah. I at 100, Surah 10. Allah says, Wa ma kana li nafsin an tu'mina illa bi itni Allah. Always remember this. Allah says, There's not a soul that believes except by the permission of Allah. That's in Surah Jonah. Okay? There's not a nephew, there's not a person, you, me, anyone, that believe, listen, except except by the permission of Allah. And we know that, that Allah makes the Muslims. 
We do what we can to invite, but Allah said there's no one that believes except by the permission of Allah in Surah Jones. Now that's 100. But I at 98, Allah says, Jonah. 
why surely Jonah was one of our messengers. One of our messengers. And Allah says, he was one of our messengers, and he ran to the ship. And on the ship, they threw lots, etc. What's going on on our boat with all this going on? We're being punished on the water because of him in the basement, down in the ship. And then Allah says, Allah says, yes. And they cast them off, and then Allah says, Yes, that then he was swallowed up by the fish. Remember that fish, the whale. He was swallowed up by the fish. By the fish. And he was a blame because he ran away from his mission. So he was consumed by the fish, right? Thinking, thought, right? Who is a fish? It's called schools, right? Brain food. So we can understand that he got caught up in his own way of thinking instead of what Allah wanted him to do. And that happens often, right? You get caught up in your own way of thinking, right? Instead of what Allah, what we know is right. And then when you come to the light, then you seek repentance and you come out of your way of thinking, right? So he was consumed. And that's why I say, who? A big fish, his own way of thinking. And Allah says, and this is beautiful before we close the first part. And Allah says, had not he made Tawbah, subhanAllah, subhanAllah, he would have remained in the belly of that fish until the day of raising. Until the day of raising. Picture, we try to connect it. He would have stayed in that mindset until the day of raising. Rob Banner, Anthony Nafi, doing your husband the thing, wife it accurately, husband the thing, wife it accurately. Alhamdulillah. 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 Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulahi Kareem. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Mubarak. So dear believers, keeping this in mind as we're talking about Jonah, but we spent off of water and the wudu, life, right? And Allah said, do you consider your water that you drink, right? So Alhamdulillah, so we get Jonah, right? But it's scattered about. So now, we just did 37. We'll talk more about Jonah. Then if you go to Surah 68, called the pen. Oh, the pen. Allah says, let me turn it, I know time-wise, so, I had 48. Allah says to us, all of us, and we know the importance of patience. It brings on patience. That things happen in our life, good, bad, we want this. But suffer, a lot is with those who are patient. Allah says, while us, and now they stand Allah, he cuts, right? Surely man is in loss, except those who believe and do good deeds and join one another in truth. And in patience. So here with Jonah, Allah says here in this surah here, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, sixty-eight. Allah says, "Fasbir, fasbir li hub mi rambi ka, wa la taqoon ka sahibil hud." Allah says, "Be patient." with the wisdom of your Lord. Listen, listen. Fast beer, that's subtle. Bil, 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 
Miram began. Be patient with the command and the wisdom of your Lord. We may not understand it all. Be patient, be righteous, strive to do good. Give, be patient, even when the midst of all of this, with the command, the understanding of your Lord. Be patient. And Allah says, and do not, do not be like Kesahi Bilhud. Don't be like the companion of the fish who grew impatient and ran from his mission. You said, teach this, teach this. Now I'm teaching the destruction and you change it up? And I have to go before these people and I done said this and I done said that? That's your test and your trial. Well, you might think one way and be adamant about it. Then when the light come on, you have to be able to say, brother, I'm sorry, you was right. How many can do that, right? How many can admit that, yeah, I got to change my way? So, so, he said, so he said, don't be like the companion of the fish who called, eventually called upon his Lord when he was in agony. Alhamdulillah. So it mentions that in 68. Now we make this one connection. We make, watch this beautiful connection. And I think for time I can, we can just talk through it. You go. So at 18, watch the connection with Jonah and Moses. So at 18, the cave. And in that surah, Allah talks about the story of Moses with his companion. Go read that surah. About his companion in the cave. And I'm just going to give you where you can find it. I start in the Ayah 61. Say so he was traveling with his companion, attendant, right? Now we got fish, right? And he said, look, we're going to travel till we get to the junction of the two rivers. And the word for junction is Jamaat, coming together. And when they got there, they sat down to eat something. But it say, starting with 61, okay, so move along. Say the fish got away. You know the story, the cave, right? Say the fish got away. And then... When they moved along to sit down to eat something or whatever, Moses said, where's the fish? And his helper said, you didn't see the fish when he swam the way in a miraculous way? He said, oh, this is what the attendant said. I forgot to tell you, only Shaitan made me forget to tell you. Now, fish, now look how important this is. They're traveling. And they lose the fish. Just like brain food, you lose your thought. What do you do? You start to backtrack. Yo, know, we were talking about this, we were talking about that, we were talking about that, right? Trying to get back to the original conversation. So it say, Moses, this is how important it was, even if you don't go with that. It say, Moses said, I'm going back to find the fish. That's how important the fish was for him, right? And as he's traveling back, to find the fish, the brain for all that's good for us, the water, right? As Moses is traveling back for the fish, he runs into one of Allah's wise servants. Kadir, it's on the tip of my tongue. Kidder. Kidder, thank you. So as he's traveling back, showing us about knowledge, he runs into one of Allah's wise servants. And he says, oh, can I travel with you that I may learn and get from you some of the mercy and wisdom that Allah has given to you? And the wise man said, nah, you're not going to be patient with some of the things you're going to see that's going to happen with me. As we started out, sometimes things appear, that's going to be our message. One way, but they're deeper than that. So he said, okay, come on. But if you you have you can't ask no question. I know you're not gonna be patient, but you can't ask nothing to us over. 
Okay? The fish, though, but it all started from the fish. Just like you know. So now, as they travel, this wise man, brother, sister, they see some people on the water fishing for their life. They, that's how they run their life. They just start fishing, right? And this wise man sunk the boat. Sunk the boat. Your life, my life. And Moses said, what you do that for? But he took him right back to the water where he left with the fish, right? So he said, what you do that for? These people making a living. He said, see, I told you, you wasn't going to have the patience. He said, so go ahead, man, leave. He said, no, 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 please give me one more chance. So they travel a little more. All right, remember what? Now they're on the land. And this wise man kills a young man. Boom! Kill him! Moses said, what a terrible thing you did! What you, you just killed that young woman! Right? He said, all right, I told you, you couldn't travel with me. You wouldn't have the patience. You can't handle that. Now, this is a righteous servant of a lot doing this. Then the third step, physical, mental, spiritual, right? They go to a town, and the people don't treat them right. They treat them bad. But then they see that a dam is about to break. And if it breaks, it's going to flood the whole city, right? But they didn't treat them with respect, right? Oh, you understand. So the wise man go and seal up the dam. And Moses say, why did you do that? And they treated us like that. You know, like someone said, why you let the damn damn break? For where they treated us, right? So he said, okay, that's it. But I'm not going to send you about your way without explaining to you what it was all about. Now, it looked one way, but it was another. He said, when we went and sunk the boat, he said, there were pirates coming that robbed them of their hard work and labor. He said, so I sunk the boat so the pirates can keep going and we can always raise it back up. You see? And that happens in your life. Things can happen that take you down, but you never know what's coming because Allah can always raise you up. And Allah says, if you doubt that I can raise you, consider that I created you from dust. And then we got to the young boy that he killed. He said, look, this person was causing his parents all kind of hell and disrespect, etc. He said, so we took him out. Because they can always give birth. God has for them to have a righteous son. Hey, oh, now I see. I told you, you're going to handle this deep stuff, this journey. Now you get to the third part before we close. He said, as for the dam, there was a family that had left some treasures behind the dam for their children. For their family, their future generation. What you leave it for the future generation. And had the dam broke, then all their treasures would have came all out to everybody to take. So it appeared one way. That's our life, brothers. Trust in Allah. It appeared one way, but it meant something so much more. And on that, they parted. But it started with the fish. You have fish. And that's Jonah, and here in Moses. And for us as Muslims, you know how we love fish. And we know fish is automatically halal, right? And we've had experiences, I know I had experiences, we say this here, fish, and you know how important salmon, right? Brain food, all of that. And us as Muslims, it's halal. So leading here, I know for me, one time we got to go, I was at a breakfast with Imam Wazadeen Muhammad, national leader that we all know, right? Going about to transition into Islam. May Allah grant him paradise. It was a program that was put on by Masjid Muhammad, South on Jamaica. This 2004, we closed. Imam Ali Muslim, may Allah grant him paradise. 
And it was a it was a banquet. And I was with my family somewhere over. And Imam Ali Muslim came over and said, Imam Muhammad, want you to sit at the table with us. Now I had already ate sausages and the breakfast that we had. And so we go to the table real quick. And Imam Muhammad, somebody came with him. He was sitting here, Imam Muhammad sitting there, Ali Muslim over there, and a few other Imams with their wives sitting at the table. And I'm sitting over here. And I got sound, I mean little mom. Imam Muhammad lifts his plate, pass the other guy, and say, Mustafa, eat some of my sound. Now you know what that <laughs> for somebody to offer you the off their plate, right? But to eat some of my salmon, right? And I'm like, wow, what's that about? So we were doing some things real quick. Then he comes to give his public talk at George Washington Carver, right? We will often do. And in his talk, and we'll leave it right here, he talks about how Jesus, right, in the old scripture, made fishermen of men. But he said he came upon men fishing, right? And they were casting their net to the left. And they wasn't getting any fish. He said, be wise and cast your net to the right. And when you cast it to the right, you'll get all the fish that you want. That's what happened. And he said, so that's saying and what we do, appeal to the right. Appeal to those that have right good sense, right? Those that have skill, etc. And when you appeal to them, you get them, inshallah, the left will follow. And that's what we're taught, right? Do it on the right. Cast it to the right. Be right. Be righteous. 